A warm welcome to the well thought out art <laughs> magician, Richard Preston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Uh, Richard Preston. <laughs> Richard Preston. Ah! Ah! I'm so, I'm so cold. <laughs> I had no idea they would just... Oh! Hot water! Oh, good! Oh, I just got out of the freezer! Oh, I feel so good! Oh! Oh! Thank goodness! Ah! Ah! Guys! Guys, you just can't throw me out of the freezer! I have to warm up to do a show! Give me a second! Let's try that again! Come on! Let's try this. <laughs> Please give a warm welcome to the well thought out party magician, Richard Preston. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ah! Okay, next one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome to Mars, everyone. My name is Richard Preston, magician to the stars. <laughs> uh, great to be here. It's great to be here. I'm telling you. I've been thinking about this one joke the entire trip here to Mars, uh, while I was frozen, of course. But uh, <clears throat> here it is. Here it is. How do you make a baby astronaut fall asleep? You rock it! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, I know you're out there. I can hear you breathing. <laughs> hey, I'll be here all evening. Try the veal. It's dehydrated. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm, a little, I'm a little off tonight. They just tossed me out of the freezer, and I was supposed to have 30 days to kind of get acclimated, but uh, yesterday was 1962 to me, so if I'm a little foggy, uh, please accept my apologies in advance. And uh, I, I, my show has a lot of movement in it, and I feel a little stiff. Hang on. Oh! No! Oh, oh. Oh, that's better. Whew. Let's take a look at my Mars pad, shall we? Wow. They got it all. Everything. My phone, ashtrays, my lamp. This is exactly what it used to look like in Manhattan, and now it's on Mars. Cardini. Those card tricks at the very beginning, Cardini taught me them in the Cardini School of Magic when I was a child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, 
Here's what, this is, you'll love this. Upon graduation, Cardini said this to me. He said, Little Richard, that's what he liked to call me. <laughs> Out of all my students, you were definitely one of them. <laughs> nice guy. Let's see, my shelf of memories is all here, my lucky tiger. Ah, yes! The Man of the Century Award. That's why I'm here tonight, performing on the very first off-planet magic show. It's so exciting. Ah, but, you know, we... This is a cocktail party. We're supposed to have a bartender, a... a bartender! Bart... Oh, a note. <laughs> it's from NASA. Dear Richard, we canceled the show on Mars. What? We're not on Mars? What are we, uh... Uh, where are we at? Um, maybe uh, an asteroid or uh, Saturn, N Neptune? Uh, Jonathan! Jonathan, I'm looking at you. Where are we? We're in a crazy, crazy world. That's where we are. <laughs> but what planet? Earth! Earth? Wait a second. What year is this? 2020. 2020. It's supposed to be 2050. Something must have happened. I, I'm, I'm way ahead of schedule. Hang on a second. There's more. You were unfrozen because the world needs you now more than ever. Oh. And it is customary you remain in a 30-day quarantine for your safety. <laughs> New mission to perform your famous cocktail party for the world to enjoy. P.S. Your bartender died in 1973. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, poor, poor Jimmy. I just have to take a moment. Okay, that's long enough. Jimmy would like to always have a good party. Now, before we do a Richard Preston cocktail party, it's important that we have an icebreaker. And here it is. I collect, obviously, a wide variety of you know, these uh, shakers, these cocktail shakers and decanters. I get them at garage sales from celebrities. And I just want to have somebody uh, pick one out. How about uh, uh, Mark? Mark Holstein, down there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Which, Hi, by the way, I, I just noticed this. Color TV! <laughs> this is great! But uh, re remember, this is a cocktail party. Why isn't everybody dressed up? It looks like people just came in from raking their yard. <laughs> uh, all right, well, anyway, sorry, Mark. Um, which of these uh, beautiful uh, garage sale objects here would you like me to uh, tell a story about? Each one of them has a unique story. Well, I kind of like the one on the end, the tall one. The tall one? Yeah. Good choice. It has a great story. <laughs> now this was bought at a great garage sale. It was bought at Bridget Bardot's garage sale. She was a really classy actress, and she always labeled her garage sales, Le Sale de Garage. <laughs> really fancy. <laughs> <laughs> now, as our icebreaker, Mark, I want you to guess how much I paid for this 24 karat gold glass decanter with a slight Indian effervescence to it. Now, remember, uh, I am a bargain shopper, so it's going to be below 100 bucks. But you have at it. 29.96. Wow. 29.96. <laughs> and that's Mark. Okay. Yeah. Well, usually she didn't like change, but <laughs> here it is. Now, see, I put you in my guess book. Okay. <laughs> These are all the different guesses that I've had over the years, and let's just see if yours matches up. 
I'm not sure if it will or not, but it's always important to pour a drink in your honor just for at least testing the waters. Mmm, yes, fruity flavor. And guess what? You're absolutely right. Oh, $29.96. <laughs> Uh, bargain. Good job. I'm impressed. Nice. I'm impressed. I, I got to take those off. <laughs> they get sticky after a while. I'm going to put this right here in your honor. <sighs> well, you know, I was brought up in the Great Depression and we didn't have a lot of hooch around. And my grandma, Aletha, she was really fun. She would like to throw great parties. And she was one of the very few people in the neighborhood that uh, <laughs> she ran liquor during Prohibition. She was quite <laughs> a classy lady. But this is what she would do. She would pour one shot and put it in the window as if it was a pie waiting to cool off. But she would let it waft into the after afternoon air and let people catch wind of it. It was either gin or rum, or some spicy thing. And then when someone would knock on the door, she would say, oh, another guest. We need more liquor. Oh, God. Pour a larger <laughs> drink. Now remember, that's just a one ounce shot. Going all the way over here to 12 ounces was no problem for Aletha. 32 ounces, not a problem. And that's how we threw our parties during the Whoa. Great Depression. Well done. <laughs> Pretty lady. She was also a Wiccan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, and this is something else that she taught me. She said, Little Richard, that's what she likes to call me. She said, I'm going to teach you a bar bet that you can't lose. And the bar bet is really simple. You can't touch the glass and you can't touch the bottle, but they, you have to make them switch places. And that's why you have the tubes. Now I would do this at bars whenever I wanted and I never had to pay for a drink. And here is a quick little demonstration of it. I say ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. The glass is over here and the bottle is over there. Ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. I did it. Now the hard part is to make it go back. <laughs> Ring it in. Boom! The glass is over here, the bottle is back over there. And that is how I got three drinks. No, no, no. I went. But when people weren't looking, I would really do it with magic. Because <laughs> they didn't want to see what it looked like. Oh! oh. Sorry. <laughs> Must be another guest. Ring-a-ding-ding, -ding. and up we go. We're back where we started again, and let's try, ooh, <laughs> more people. <laughs> oh, one-handed, one-handed. Up we go, <laughs> down, and perfect. What's that? Another so one. Many people. <laughs> Too many people, that's right. <laughs> uh oh. oh. Get those out of there. Okay. And here we go. One, two, three. Oh, now we've got just the glasses. And another bottle of wine here, another bottle of wine here, and another bottle of wine here. And that's how we load up. Preston household. There's some people out there I'm noticing that aren't wine drinkers. So stop your whining. This is a party. We got the hard stuff. Here we go. We have martini, but all kinds of different flavored martinis. We've got this flavor and that flavor and this one and this one. And oh my gosh, we got this one and we can put this one over here. And we got one here and one over there and boom. And now we have 67 bottles for our show. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Please remain seated during the show. I'm going to push this over here. Uh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I didn't write that. <laughs> now, every cocktail party must have a unique invitation, and mine is the best. Take a look at this. Look at the artwork. Now, look at the description at the bottom. It says, guess list. Guess list. Guess. You have to <laughs> guess who's on my list. That's how uh, I get more people to come to my parties. Now, I know who's coming, but I want to make sure that everybody is uh, compatible with, with each other. And then, of course, we have to have hors d'oeuvres, and you have to have, of course, the coup de gras, a cheese ball. And that's what I'm known for, the Preston <laughs> cheese balls. <laughs> this and Ritz crackers. is a really good time <laughs> to create your own cocktail invitation. And let's see who would like to help out. Um, let's take a look here. I need, uh, how about Adam, down there on the bottom? Oh. Adam Scher? Yeah. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. Now, Adam, yeah. I have here uh, uh, my invitation, which is, of course, the best. Nobody's ever bested me. So uh, if you were to create your own invitation, what one person would you like to attend? Hmm. Uh, can they be alive or dead? It doesn't matter. Wow. Uh, let, let's, let's go for Harry Houdini. Harry Houdini. Okay, so this is going to be a seance cocktail party, apparently. <laughs> Absolutely fine and on the level. One day he will return. I'm convinced of it. Okay, Adam, now you have your one guest. Now, we need to have uh, a, a party favor, some sort of a finger food. Finger food. What finger food would you have at your party? Um, maybe some crab cakes. Crab cakes. Yes. So Houdini and crab cakes. And then the cheese ball, the coup de gras. What flavored cheese ball would you have? Flavored cheese balls? Um, hmm. Can we have a strawberry cheese ball? Sure, why not? A why not? strawberry cheese ball. <laughs> I, I have no idea how that would be held together with some coagulating uh, agent for sure, but nonetheless, I'm impressed with your, with your uh, creative invitation. Let's see, let's, let's recap. We have Houdini, and we have crab cakes, and a strawberry-flavored uh, cheese ball. Well, Absolutely. Now, remember, nobody has ever bested my uh, cocktail invitation. Perhaps maybe you did. Ah. Oh, I got an idea. Before I, before I show you mine, everybody, let's vote. Really, it's important that you vote. <laughs> <laughs> here's mine. Here's mine. Let's see who's, who's is better. Mine had Harry Houdini will be summoned, and, uh, crab cakes will be served, wow. and Adam will be making his famous strawberry. Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah. Oh, well done. Adam, I've never been bested, but you just equaled me. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Adam. Good job. Have you ever wondered why fluoride is in the water? <laughs> it's because of me. <laughs> Let me explain. See, toward the end of World War II, around 1945, I was a member of an elite chemical team. And I had a special name, Agent Orange. And <laughs> I was to be injected with more fluoride than any human being because we found that fluoride affects the right side of the brain the brain where all the creativity happens and where you can connect you know, objects and things with your mind. And that is where things got interesting. At the end of the war, I was actually able to project thoughts into people's minds. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for you. I'm gonna demonstrate it for you. But you know what's interesting though, uh, after the study was over with, this is, really, is absolutely true, after the study was over with, Four out of five dentists surveyed recommended 
fluoride for the patients who wanted to read minds. We found. I forgot about that commercial. Fluoride. Let's give it a test, shall we? Uh, All right. Uh, how about Hillary? Down there in the corner. Hillary? I have four large playing cards here. They are the kings. They are the kings. And one of them is turned over. Now, since you probably haven't uh, had thoughts injected into your head, uh, I'm going to have you just take a drink of water. Make sure that you're fluorided up. Mm. Another reason why there's fluoride in the water, and you didn't know this, is that we wanted America to be a superpower of ESPers. ESPers. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, Project a thought into your brain, Hillary. I am thinking. I am thinking of two. That the kings are going to divide them into two categories. Can you tell me what the two categories are for these four kings? Red and black. Perfect, of course. <laughs> Injection number one. Now, of those two <laughs> colors, please name one. Black. Black. Okay, we're going to keep the black cards. We're going to throw the red cards away. They're gone forever. Now that leaves us with the king of clubs and the king of spades. Of those two, which one would you want to be thrown away? The king of clubs or the king of spades? King of clubs. The king of clubs. King of Clubs is gone. That means the only one that's left is the King of Spades. Now, did you feel anything weird happen when I asked you to volunteer? Just say yes. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I injected a thought into your brain. First, it was just a color. But then I manifested an actual card, the King of Spades. Oh, only wow. one first. Amazing. Thank nice. you. Thank you. Uh, but I was so convinced, I was so convinced that it's the only red backed card. Wow. <laughs> oh, oh, it gets better. The only card with printing. Oh my God. What? Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm going to go to my wall of memory now. <laughs> this is me with Ed Sullivan. Okay. <laughs> There's a true story behind that. See, Ed and I, uh, created a controversy in uh, the field of entertainment. See, I performed this very trick on his show, and he was so impressed that he took me aside and he said, Little Richard, that's what he liked to call me. <laughs> he said, I want you to do another trick on the show tonight. And I was, well, unfortunately, I had to bump the other entertainer that was behind me. He was a really famous, really famous entertainer. I became the first entertainer to bump somebody off of television. I'll give you a hint who it was. Here we go. <laughs> Elvis. It was Pat Boone. <laughs> I'm kidding. It was really Elvis. He didn't talk with, he didn't talk with me for two years. But <laughs> we're talking now, though. This is uh, a trick with, uh, it, it's called visible invisible salt. It'll either make things become visible or make them invisible. And, uh, uh, oh, oh, yeah, it's to music. Get the old hi-fi going here. And by the way, I recommend this album, Burt Kempfer. <laughs> Never be too careful. Yes, I remember doing that. <laughs> Start the high five. Careful with the <laughs> 
Very much, or should I say, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, haha! -ha. Oh, ho, ho. we're gonna have fun with this. Before I was put on the uh, the list to be cryogenically frozen, I had to take a cognitive ability test. Oh yay! <laughs> and it was top secret. Yeah, no. We're going to do one right now. This is the same one that I took. Let's, let's do the first ones first, Sally. Work with me. This is a lion. <laughs> that is a rhino. That one's Stop. a camel. <laughs> The last five questions get really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if you can get to the same conclusion I had. So clear your minds, everybody. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> Think of a number between one and 10. One and 10. Give me a thumbs up when you have it. Okay, good. Now multiply that number by nine. Multiply that number by nine. See, uh, Terry Hissong there is using an abacus or something. They're <laughs> going like that across the screen. All right, uh, add those two digits together. You multiply the number by nine, add the two digits together. Now you have a brand new number. Thumbs up. Good. Subtract five from that number. Subtract five from that number. Thumbs up, very good. Find the letter in the alphabet matching that number. For instance, one would be A and two would be B. Good, okay. Now I want you to think of the first country that comes to mind. The first country that comes to mind that begins with that letter that you're on right now. Think of it, the first letter. You got it? The country that begins with the letter that you landed on. Good? Now the second letter, the second letter in that country, I want you to think of an animal that begins with that letter. Good? I'm feeling good? Now, think of the color of that animal. 
How many of you, raise your hand if you are thinking of a gray elephant in Denmark? <laughs> you aren't. I sure as no. all well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so a, crazy. Woo! Yeah. You always your audition. There's something I wrong. Stop. Well, uh, I, I, Paul, I, judging by your reaction, it looked like uh, you didn't quite get to the same conclusion. <laughs> Either that or you fell asleep. I have no idea. Um, it is math wrong. I forgot his multiplication. <laughs> uh, Chris, did you, Chris, down there in the bottom, did you get that? You did? Okay. Uh, well, um, who did not get it? Just raise your hand. Tracy. Tra Tracy, what did you come up with? I had a brown camel in Brazil. <laughs> get security. Get, get security. <laughs> Brown uh, somewhere along the line, you got some wires crossed, but uh, I think what you, you definitely will not be going to Mars, but I think, I think NASA's going to put you on an asteroid, to tell you the truth. I'm training for those right now, actually. But, but Terry, Terry, uh, Tracy, Tracy, I'm going to give you a chance, an opportunity to come with us to Mars because we all want you there. Because we think that you would be great at Christmas. I'm very excited. <laughs> you ready, Tracy? I am. We're going to make a cocktail together with these ingredients. As you can see, that's a cocktail. That's a, uh, an umbrella. This is uh, an orange. That is a maraschino cherry. And this is a pink elephant. That means you made it too strong. <laughs> okay, now. We have matching cards. I'm going to make this as easy as possible. There are the matching cards. We're going to switch camera angles here so you can get a close-up view of it. There they are. Can you see them, Tracy? I can. I can see everyone. Very good. Now, this is to help you out. I want you to come to Mars so badly because you seem like such a nice person. I'm going to turn one of these cards over, and, and let's see if you can match match it up. This is just the memory test, okay? I'm going to I'm just going to turn this one over. Okay. All right. Which one did I turn over and what was it? The uh the uh orange slice there. Correct. All You're right. You're well on your way. <laughs> You're well on your way. Now now we'll go to phase 2 and make it a little harder. I would advise you to drink some water. The second picture here, and then Become hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Pay attention. Pay attention. We'll I'm going to turn mind. over these cards here for you. And, oh, it just got more difficult. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh is right. Make sure that floor oh, no. is flushing. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Now use your psychic abilities now. Where do you think Man. this card Man. should go? On TV. <laughs> right there. Uh, there. Right there. There, yeah. there, there, there isn't helpful. You'll have to uh, tell me. What you're <laughs> I forget what that thing is. What's, What's that? that thing? Wait, is that an olive? Is That's that a, what that is? That's a red that? cherry. The umbrella. The umbrella. The umbrella. Yeah, umbrella. Umbrella. Okay, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're we're getting good, Terry. We're getting we're, Tracy. We're getting good. All right, now, <laughs> where does this one go? Oh, that's a, that's the cherry, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, Tracy. Where's where's this one gonna go? Oh, that's the cocktail. Oh, he's very confident now. This is good. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, the uh, orange elephant. Orange, the and, that, and that one goes to the pink elephant. Yes. At this point, would you like to switch any of them? Nope. <laughs> that's confidence. Now, folks, remember, this is so Terry Hissong can all, <laughs> can, Tracy Hissong, I don't know why. 
Excuse me. Thanks, Stu. <laughs> Thanks, Stu. <laughs> uh, that'll clear my brain. Over there, man. It was the story of my life. <laughs> All right, Tracy. Tracy, are you sure this is the last? Th this is it. You betcha. Okay, let's see how you did. A perfect match. Wow. Perfect match. Nice. Perfect match. A perfect, nice. match. A perfect match. Very impressive. Thank you. Well, don't. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Tracy did it. Hey, Tracy. Oh, Tracy. Shut up for Tracy. Tracy's going to Mars. <laughs> Where he belongs. How do you know he's not there? <laughs> <laughs> and they'll still call me Terry up there, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get out our playing cards. The ones with the four aces. Same trick. And there's 16 in different cards. I don't want to get it wrong. What are we supposed to now, uh, this, this has a great story attached to it. You see, I was invited to Jack Kennedy's birthday party, his 45th birthday party at Madison Square Garden. And there was a beautiful actress that was supposed to sing happy birthday to him. Perhaps you know her, Marilyn Monroe. Well, she was introduced and didn't show up. A little bit later, she was introduced again didn't show up. At the very end of the evening, she finally came up on stage and sang that very famous song, Happy Birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> you know why she was late? Because I was showing her this trick. <laughs> <laughs> We did it repeatedly backstage, three times. <laughs> so let's have some fun. You're going to gather up all these cards, and the aces are going to be set off to the side. And I want you to put the aces into the pack face up in the face down deck. Face up in the face down deck. Anywhere you like, one at a time. go. And everybody give me a thumbs up when you're done. Our tricks are hard. <laughs> Very good. We're going to count out 10 cards. 10 cards. Two. Now we have two piles. Eight, nine, ten. Okay. Oh, two piles. This is the fun part. You get to turn over one of the packs. It doesn't matter which one, but turn over one of them. All right, very good. Now from the left pile, you're gonna put a card in between the two stacks. So you're gonna put it into the center and then from the right, you're gonna put one on top of that and continue going from left to right, mixing the cards up one at a time until all the cards are mixed. Don't worry if they're face up or face down. That's the idea. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up when you're all set. Well, I think you already messed it up. These cards are sticking together. Jesus, I did mine the first time instead of 10. I messed it up. Well, the things I'm hearing, I'm hearing tequila, vodka, whiskey. <laughs> Listen, everybody. You're on this side. I'm the one calling the shots. <laughs> okay. You're going to de deal out a poker hand. One, two, three, four. And keep dealing the poker hand out until all the cards are gone. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, very good. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up there from Megan Lloyd's camp. <laughs> now we're going to count the cards. We're going to get one. We have four piles. One, two, three, four. We're going to pick up pile one and pile three. So his left. <laughs> your left. <laughs> doesn't matter. My left, one, your left doesn't matter. Okay. So now you're going to put one of the piles on top of each other. It doesn't matter. And with the remaining two piles, do the same thing. Doesn't matter which pile goes on top of which. I know, it's exhausting. I think it's a lot easier. This is the last step. Yay! And believe, and believe me, this last step will be amazing. You're going to shuffle the cards, but before we shuffle the cards, I, you get to flip over one of the decks. Doesn't matter which one. Okay. Now, shuffle them together. Make a little pile. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Hold the cards in your hand. I'm going to show you what your cards look like. They look like this. A mess. Yep. I'm going to project my magic through the airwaves. And I just want you to shake your cards and then spread them out. And you'll see that all the cards are oh, now nice. face down with the aces face up. And, and if uh, your aces are in the wrong direction, turn the cards yeah. over. Oh, come on. Look at it. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. 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 Work the other night. Everybody get it? Oh, yeah. Wow. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what did that just happen? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. All right. I take it. I take it everybody did well. Yeah. Yay. Wow. So good. Bravo. Bravo. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to everyone who did it correctly. Oh my Congratulations. <laughs> Want to see some space coins? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to show them to you anyway. They're on my shelf of memories. <laughs> They're really from outer space. Smoking. <laughs> oh, <man>. I won these space coins in a poker game with John Glenn. Ooh, <laughs> wow. Wow. He's a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> right after, right after his orbital flight. Uh, <laughs> and by the way, this is the funniest part. Look, these coins were really in outer space. They're worth their weight in gold, and this is what I beat him with—a pair of twos. <laughs> John, it's called a bluff. <laughs> If you're listening, John, if you're listening, you'd make a better poker player than a politician. Tell him. <laughs> Just invite me over all the time. You won't have any space coins ever. I'll have them all. By the way, I put these space coins to uh, some beautiful music because I think they deserve it. And they have some special properties I think you'll find fascinating.
Thank you. You know, even though that routine requires a lot of skill, uh, most people ask the same question, how do you float away like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, going to have to adjust the servo on that one. <sighs> yeah, okay. Well, folks, would you like to see the greatest trick ever created? Yes. yes. Absolutely. What sure. else is there to do? <laughs> <laughs> this was created by me when I was uh, starving as a magician. And uh, of course, that's when you're usually your most creative. And it's, it's a magic trick that magicians have been dogging me for for a long time to figure out. And of course, none have. And let's find somebody to help me out that hasn't. How about uh, Kat and Cameron? <laughs> Don't be so enthusiastic. <laughs> Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Now, uh, Kat, I'm going to go through the cards like this. You say stop somewhere between the top and the bottom, and that'll be your card. And I guarantee you, I will show you a miracle that you won't soon forget. Ooh. Ready? Here we go. Stop. There? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Well, let's see that yes. again. Okay. It was the wrong spot. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. There? Stop. Okay. Yeah. That's your card. Great. Oh. Great? Oh. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. of course it is. It is a great <laughs> trick. We're going to put your card here so everybody can see it. Now, look in my eyes. What are you doing? <laughs> 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 Your card is being lost Wait, hopelessly <laughs> in the deck. I'm now going to attempt to find your card using the note <laughs> method. It's called spelling. A C E Ace of Spades. No? <laughs> no. Uh -oh. No. No. All right. How about a, a little a pass? Carrier pass? <laughs> <laughs> Queen of Diamonds. No. <laughs> All right. Well, how about the Hail Mary? <laughs> uh, five of Clubs. No. Oh. No? Happened? How could that have happened? I had, I had it worked out. Oh, oh my god! god. Oh my god! Oh. Wow! wow. <laughs> that you is my card. You ruined my card. They were all my card. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, really good. Now, I had a roommate that loved that trick so much. His name was Monty Hall. Now, Monty <laughs> and I, we got along great, except Monty wanted to know the secret to that trick so bad that he would wheel and deal with me. He would try to bribe me. And one day, 
he opened up the garage door and there he gave me an Amana radar range. <laughs> Auntie Hall did that so often, but at that moment, it inspired me to create the greatest game show in the world. And I brought it with me here tonight because in two days time, I'm gonna be pitching it to the top three networks. And if those don't take three it- Three networks. And maybe PBS. <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> it's, a, it's a winner. And I have a mocked up version of it over here. Okay. And now it's time to play Let's Fake a Deal with Richard Preston. <laughs> it's a working title. Uh, I'm sure it would have been close. It's Let's close. <clears throat> Now here's how the game show would work. Of course, this is a, a scaled down version of the set, but these doors have fabulous prizes behind them. Now imagine the door big enough to fit a car behind, like a brand new $2,000 Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, the prizes are a little smaller. So uh, obviously, uh, I, I'll be mailing you the prize, whoever, whoever plays tonight. What are stamps? Four cents now? Yeah. <laughs> i get my microphone working here. There we go. All right, now it's time to play Let's Fake a Deal, where you get to win the prize that's selected behind the door. Now, tonight, I'm going to be looking for the person who is wearing the most ridiculous costume in our audience. It's going to be a costume show, so let's take a look here. How about... Um, Oh, I'm seeing all kinds of wonderful. How about uh, uh, Colin? Colin. Colin McNaw. <laughs> Colin McNaw, three dots. That's an interesting name. Good name. Now, Colin, you'll be playing Let's Fake a Deal, where you get to choose door number one, door number two, or door number three. But you're going to have the help of the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, help Colin figure out which door to select for tonight. All right, Colin, it's up to you. Which door would you like? Door number one, door number two, or door number three? So much good advice, but I think I heard like two most. Two. Yay. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what's interesting about this game is that it is not rigged in any way. Yeah. Not like that $64,000 question. That was an Legitimate. So let's see what you didn't win behind door number one. Oh. 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 oh Ten. Thousand dollars. Oh my god. <laughs> I was prepared to mail that to you. <laughs> Door number three. Oh, oh no. <laughs> another stack of ten thousand oh, dollars. Take a week to mail it out to you. What a shame. But perhaps the greatest prize, prize of all is behind door number two. Perhaps. There it is! <laughs> Rice Aroni! Rice Aroni, the San Francisco treat! Now with mm, beef flavor! <laughs> <laughs> yes, they have the new magic flavor crystals that are going to be arriving soon at your local Piggly Wiggly. Check your Sunday circulars. <laughs> Sunday circular. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, uh, Colin, you, you, look, you look a little upset that you didn't win the money, and, uh, but you did win Rice Aroni, the San Francisco tree. Where are you from, <laughs> Colin? Where are you from? Uh, Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Oh, a very nice, peaceful place. Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Love yeah. Portland, Oregon. Now, uh, I tell you what, Colin, um, I, I, I do feel bad because everybody is supposed to feel <laughs> happy after this show is over with, uh, and you don't. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you feel good tonight. I'm going to show you a trick, a card trick. We'll just put this away. Forget this never happened. <laughs> 
sorry, sorry. I gotta, I gotta make it, make the prizes a little more joyful if you don't win. Um, but we'll just set that over here. A card trick, card trick for Colin. There's a deck of playing cards. <laughs> you know, these cards are so big. Once you take them out of the box, you can't put them back in. <laughs> Big How little, big little Colin, is that helping you smile? Look, how about this? Loud noises, loud noises, Colin. Does that make him smile at all? He's not smiling still. All right, Colin, name any card that you see, and that'll be the card you choose. Six of diamonds. Six of diamonds. All right. Go put it in your mouth. That'll be your card. Now, to make sure that it is your card throughout this entire card trick, tell me, what would you like me to put on the card, to write on it? What would you like? Uh, $10,000. $10,000. <laughs> $10,000. Yay. IOU above that. $10,000 and six diamonds. <laughs> yeah. Ah, nice. All right, Colin, there's your card right there on the table. Here is the card trick for your enjoyment. Take your card, put it in the center there, do a little... Your card is now leaping through the air, and it has landed in my pocket. Right here. We call this the king of card tricks. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's your card. <laughs> what? Magic's based on trust. You don't trust me yet. Uh, look, Colin, it really is your card. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Wait a minute. Don't, don't all applaud at once. I'll, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Colin, <laughs> to make you feel better, I'm going to give you the opportunity to catch me. Catch me if you can. I'm going to put your card back into the center of the deck. Your card is leaping through the air, and it has landed back in my pocket. Look, hand, 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 hand. Nothing, 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 nothing. Your card. Oh, wow. <laughs> Pretty amazing. <laughs> Bill, he's not satisfied. Not satisfied. Look, I'll put your card right here. And I'll do this special shuffle that I learned in India. <laughs> there it is. Your card is lost somewhere in the deck. No idea where it could be. And your card is leaping through the air and lands back in my pocket. No. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> Something really went wrong there. You may have seen me do a little foul up move there. Uh, <laughs> hey, Colin. <laughs> I bet you had no idea that you're still, you're still playing. Let's fake a deal. I can stop right now and show you how the card trick ends and you'll experience joy or you can have what's inside the box. So, experience joy, oh. <laughs> or have what's inside the box. It's entirely up to you, Colin. Which will you have? Richard, I'll take the box. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ex likes joy. <laughs> it's a good card trick. Now, this is the first time that the box has been handled by humans since leaving the factory. <laughs> and inside, there's something oh. on the inside. Look. It's a new card! <laughs> <laughs> and it matches yours perfectly. Look, the back, it's the same, same card. And $10,000. Oh, hey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, folks, you have had a great crowd. It's wonderful for you all to come out tonight and have some fun with us. And uh, I have saved the last trick for last. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tradition. And uh, this is it. It's just a simple piece of string. Now, I want to tell you something. 
This string represents my life, and I know that uh, in your lives right now, there's a lot going on. I mean, with the Cuban Missile Crisis and all. <laughs> but when I was born, I was born during the Great Depression. And then there was World War II. My phone's connected to this computer and it locked me out. <laughs> and then, Korean War. McCarthyism. Polio. And the world was messed up. But yet, the Preston survived, kept pressing on. At the beginning of the 60s, Vietnam was starting. And then there was this whole thing of nuclear, nuclear bombs, teaching our kids to hide under tables. It was really a tough time. We all were kind of fighting with each other, making a mess. You might feel like that's what's going on right now in your world. <laughs> and the rational people are over here going, what is happening? Sooner or later though, people get tired of fighting and messing things up and they start to come together one by one. Wow. Because wow. hope spreads like a virus. And if I can survive all of this, <laughs> you can survive whatever you're going through. That's my gift to you tonight, folks. Yeah. Hey. Well, thank you, ever. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll see all of you in the future. It was a good show tonight. Was it Klondike 555? Five, five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lots of zeros. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Johnny! Johnny, baby. Yeah, yeah, it was a great show tonight. Uh huh. Yeah, full house, full house. Uh huh, yeah. <laughs> Great! So there's another show tomorrow. Oh, we're held over. Fantastic! Okay. Uh, is there going to be an after party? There is! Well, you know me and parties. Okay. All right, Dave. We'll see you there. <laughs> after party time! <laughs> after party time. Oh, thank you guys very much for coming tonight. Uh, we had a wonderful time, and this is a huge group, so give yourselves a round of applause for coming here tonight. The blast. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, again, on behalf of Croswell, myself, thank you. But usually, about now, I can get Richard Preston to come in here. And, oh, there he is. Richard, oh, Richard Preston. <laughs> 
Well, hey, it's great to see everybody. Thank you very much for coming. It was a, a wonderful evening. You folks are really very, uh, it, you are the biggest crowd yet. And I'm so excited <laughs> for you all to be here. Excellent show. It was a oh. blast. Well Thank done. It, it looks like there's a, a young man uh, wandering the streets that uh, <laughs> he, he, might, he might be homeless or, <laughs> or in need so, of immediate assistance. <laughs> your, your show is at the most inopportune time <laughs> for those of us on the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> well, but damn it, I wasn't going to miss it. By the way, who would choose a box over a joy? Who would choose that? It's Taroni. Somebody hoping there'd be 10K in the box. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Correctly. Uh, well, it was, uh, it was really fun having you here. And, uh, uh, and, uh, that uh, the young man that's wandering around. Thank you very much for the fine comments. You're an honorable you gentleman. All uh, well, again, thank you very much, everybody. I think we've got to go to the uh, the party, the after party here. And uh, <laughs> but uh, you know who you are. Stick around for the after party, and we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Well done. All right, there's Mark and Sue. Um. Bye, everybody. Thanks again for coming. I know, Bye, there, I know there were a couple of people that were asked to um, to, to stay for a second. So if you if you have the secret golden ticket, stay for a minute. Other than that, please tell your friends, come back and see us. I, I love that there's so many people I knew tonight. So thank you guys for coming. Hi, Lori. Hey, hey Lori. Lori, this yes. is Beverly. This Hi, is Beverly. Uh, thanks so much. And um, tell Richard that all those people that call him little richard that's fabulous as yeah. long as you're not calling him little richard <laughs> i i will let him know that thank you bye. Beverly. bye bye yeah we'll see you later lord can you hear me i can can you get me back on the video oh. what was that can oh you get God. me back on video i see you can you I see, I don't see, I don't see you guys you don't see, see us? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna log off and log back on. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, try that, Oscar. I Thank don't know. You. Well, okay. people are in a, log off. I don't a, uh, log on. Do what I did, uh, you know, composite. Okay. But they're log off. All right, I know that she is gone. Oh. Let's see. I know I can get rid of her. Get rid of me. She said, I know I can get rid of a couple people. She said, I know I can get rid of a few people. All right. Uh, but they're all in the they're all I was saying I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to help a couple people out here. I know there's a few of you guys staying, so if you know you're staying, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I just highlighted myself here, though. I didn't mean to do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yes. Yes. Probably not. No, perfect. That's good. Yes. 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 All righty. Bye, Tracy. Oh, you got which, which puppy is that? Before I nix you out of here. This is Wheezy. Oh. Oh. She is so cute. Mine has just wandered into the room. It's so good to see you, Tracy. I, I miss you much. Oh, you too. Hey, you know what? What? Uh, George, George and Wheezy are moving on up. Where are you going? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm getting a new apartment right in downtown Nashville. Excellent. It, Excellent. It great fun. Well, <laughs> You know, when the virus is over. Anyway, great to see you. Great show. Thank you. Thanks so much. Good luck on your move. Ah, well, we're moving on up to <laughs> East Side. <laughs> uh, 
He looks right, There he goes. Is this looking Hello, good, Jean? Is there anybody that... I, I think this is our house. Good. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you while we're waiting for Stu to jump back in here. I think he's putting on pants. Um, but, <laughs> but then again, who knows? I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, Tracy. Oh, there he is. Tracy, his song that was that was in here. Um, I do the the murder mystery dinner train, and he used to be one of the actors on the murder mystery train with me for probably about like 11, 12 years, and then he moved down to Nashville. So I've emailed him a few times, but this is the first time I've seen him in probably about six years so that was kind of cool uh, nice. that, that's really been the nice thing about this too um, just the fact that there's been so many people because it is a zoom platform that you know so many states I know we're covering quite a few just with our group right here so oh here comes Stu um, yeah um, oh you're gonna be really short Stu that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> we might change that around but yeah no that that's that's one of the only cool things about the zoom platform but but it has been really nice to be able to see everybody and 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 you guys too so yeah all right well this was fun i don't know why they call him little richard <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you never saw him actually standing with anyone, did you? <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, this is uh, this was quite an adventure to pull this off for the Croswell Emmy. The, the character, Richard, was invented literally in the middle of June, uh, according to all of our notes. So he's he's growing wow. every night and he's turning yeah. into, he's turning into something else every he, it's like he's a little bit of Mr. Rogers, like going back to his shelf of memories, <laughs> and a little bit of a uh, little bit of Three Stooges at the very beginning. Almost everything that I grew up with, it's like we're throwing all the comedy that we can, that's in that's in this head of mine, and seeing which one uh, he emerges as. So it's uh, it's been quite a quite an adventure in that department. A little Buddy Holly in there too. What's that? A little Buddy Holly there. Too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. There's there's a lot of things molded into one there. Yeah. You can have the big chair so I can, apparently my daughter needs to Stuart, go. Stuart, uh, I want to jump in here a little bit cuz yeah, we want you I'm to Gene, go for partially it. responsible for summoning a lot of these people in here. Yes, you are. And and so uh without here, me laboring it, I threatened you that I wanted a little bit of backstory on cuz you and Lori back when I first met you, you were out there working the college circuit as Stuart and Laurie. Right. Mm -hmm. So just about in one minute, so how many years did you do that? And then you went off to do something else. I think you were in the video business, but not for magic. And you also had a haunted house for like 13 years mm -hmm. that you were in yes. for yeah. six, you know. And then eventually you went to Whirlpool and that was very formative for things that are coming into this show. But in between there, you went in the competition magic business for a while. And then that kind of led you somehow on, on that you were, you know, Johnny, you know, you fooled Penn and Teller. Right. And et cetera. So kind of glance across that, and then you can talk about whatever you want. Okay? A lot. Well, I know that Lori can uh, attest to the college market. Oh yeah, we did the college market. It was interesting because we got signed with, and this will be a name for some of you that might ring a bell here, but um, with Bob Kramer, Kramer Agency, oh. Kramer and Company. Sure. Yeah. Um, he had done the colleges and he had an agency and he booked us and we were still in college actually when we started doing the college market. So there were kids at school that were actually older than us that we were performing for when we first started. Um, we did the college market for, probably 15 years where we really did that heavy, probably did about a thousand colleges all together. Um, yeah, we did 48 states of colleges um, wow. everywhere. Yeah, and then our goal was to get off the road a little bit more because we were traveling all the time. And then that's when Gene had said the haunted house. We were like, hmm, if we did a haunted house, there would be like two months we could actually stay home. So we did the we did the haunting, which ended up being one of the largest haunted houses in the Midwest, um, 20,000 square feet. We did that for, what, 18 years. And then I'll let Stu take over from there. I will come back, but I am going to take my dog out real quick. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's a, that says a lot. Um, <laughs> take me out. <laughs> take the um, but uh, yeah, I, I think Matt King uh, and I, we, we, we never uh, did the college market, but I remember when you branched off into the club circuit, I remember having a conversation with you at Abbott's. Yeah, I mean, I, I never did. I, I attempted the college market for about a few months and uh, hated it. So uh, never, I never did. Uh, I w it, it wasn't my, I was, I don't know. I didn't like it at all. I, it, the uncertainty of it, the, the uh, you know, sometimes it would be, you know, six people in a lunchroom and sometimes it would be a thousand people with a crew and, it was that those were fantastic and sometimes it would just be awful and uh so i never did really pursue that like i did the clubs and then the club started dying down and i got out of that too <laughs> moved to las vegas yeah there you go yeah i i uh so was a week so we stuck with it because we're gluttons for punishment and <laughs> well but you guys were carrying lights and sound you guys were your own crew really almost right yeah yeah and then when we got out of it the spencers came in behind us and so they kind of blew yeah. up after that um but uh yeah so after the colleges um you know 9 11 hit and that's when i said well, let's stay home a little bit more and so i developed an ad agency called boomerang studios and i did about for about it was about a decade um, of TV commercials, regional. I did one national, and um, you know, I made a couple of movies. I made a movie called "I Want to Look Like That Guy," and yep. and that one took off. Uh, that one actually paid a lot of bills, so that we were really happy with that one. And then, uh, and then I went to Whirlpool uh, in 2014, and I stayed there until October. Of, of this year because uh, I, I wanted to um, compete uh, and get back because magic I hadn't been in magic for such a long time that I was uh, uh, feeling um, empty on the inside and, and the corporate life is just it just sucks everything out of you if, if you're a creative type it just it's like ugh. and and I got to a point where I was like when was I the most happy and I was the most happy when I was creating magic and I was, and I was driving towards something. And when I stopped driving towards something, that's when I thought, well, if I'm going to, I want to, I've always wanted to be uh, known at, for, uh, at doing well at FISM. Uh, winning would be great. But uh, so I, the first time I competed to qualify was 2014 in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And I basically face planted on stage and Mark Holstein, you, you saw the, the train wreck that that was, it was, it was <laughs> terrible. It really was, Stuart, it really wasn't a train wreck. Oh, no, it was. was. No. When, you're, when your first effect is your dancing cane and it's tangled like in a spider web and it won't go anywhere. <laughs> and it, it's like, yeah, it was. That's a plane crash. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a plane crash. And, and guys uh, in Texas are tough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and no parachute. Yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, that's when Gene uh, came into play and he said, uh, um, I want a story. And, and so I, I thought, oh, goodness, I, I graduated in college with theater and, and writing. And, uh, and I was like, well, let's put together a story. So as this story started to evolve, after I picked up the pieces of my shattered ego in St. Louis. <laughs> Welcome back, Lori. I'm like, wow, what part of the story are we at now? Uh, shattered it's ego, really enter Lori. <laughs> it's funny though, because I have, I was outside, but I know exactly what part of the story we're at now, so go ahead. So there's a guy in the bottom of your screen, his name is Tobin Ost. He looks like he's uh, a, in a very presidential suite right there. <laughs> Um, and he's waving. Presidential 400 foot New York apartment. There you go. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you guys know, and, and Tobin, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a, your props due here. He is uh, a production designer uh, for Broadway, and if you've ever seen the musical Newsies, he designed all of it. That, and he wow. was nominated for a Tony for that. Wow. <laughs> I know, but he's also from my hometown and he likes magic. 
So uh, I called him up one day. I didn't call him. I, I'll tell the story. And, and I'll have Tobin confirm it because I hope I remember it correctly. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting in my living room going, I'm stuck. I can't, I, I, this mirror is, is good, but it's not good enough. And so I'm like, well, Tobin Ost, he, he's from my hometown. I'll just, uh, you know, message him on Facebook. I'd say within 10 minutes, he said, call me, I want to help. And so mm. I, I called him and he said, and, I, and I'm like, Tobin, I can't afford you. You're way, way out of my league. I can't. And, and he's like, no, I want to help. And, and you can correct me, Tobin, if I'm lying. But uh, I remember you said you wanted to uh, repay me. Because when I was, when you were a kid in elementary school, I did the cut and restored rope trick. You brought me up on stage and you introduced me to theater. Uh, um, and, I, and, and so Tobin and I have that connection when he was a little kid that I did the cut and restored rope for him and that's what got him interested in theater. And so <laughs> he kind of linked up with the, the show. And uh, so he's the one that, uh, kind of production designed the mirror where it's it's in a um it's in an attic i remember we were talking and he said yeah the the sheet that you have over it is all wrong make it look like it's uh in an attic and he said but but make the cloth kind of like a drape cloth a drop cloth and oh it could be haunted so then it became that and then he came on board with this show as well with the croswell um and and, and we were doing it in my, in my home. Now my home is all mid-century modern, everything. And we had it up against the fireplace and that's when, when Tobin goes, you know, this should be mid-century modern. And, and that's where I, we started thinking and Richard Preston, we were just on our back porch and all of a sudden, I don't know why Richard Preston came to my mind. Maybe I was thinking of Robert Preston, but there it there is. He is. That, and that, <laughs> That's one sentence for you, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got to say, Stuart was the, Stuart and Lori, the, the, it was, it was the, the first magic I ever saw in her hometown. I, I can tell you exactly where I was sitting in, in my elementary school, and I was dazzled, and, and it's a big world and a small world, and I love that I'm sitting here so many years later, and having this conversation it's, it's 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 pretty wonderful so and, so and you have a link all, with, all the all luminaries that are on the screen right now so yeah. so thank you and, and you have a link with steinmeier too how's that uh steinmeier Jim you steinmeier. yeah yeah we uh we did a production in of pippin uh the musical pippin out in la at the mark taper forum and we were working with uh i mean i I don't know magic. Uh, I, I can make things look pretty on stage, but I knew that like that show was very specifically, we wanted magic in it. And, and I, I knew maybe just enough to be dangerous, but not enough to, to make things happen on, on a bigger scale. So we were working with Pepper's Ghost, uh, mm -hmm. all these things that I had an inkling of how they worked, but not really how they worked. And uh, he was brought on to work with us on the show. And, and I told him like very, what's the word I want, very, uh, Kind of innocently and sheepishly that that i really love that from disney and the haunted mansion etc cetera, etc cetera. lo and behold we worked together and about two weeks later a book arrived at my apartment that was the treatise on pepper's ghost and its history from i want to say the 1500s forward so wow. um it, it's kind of been a wonderful history and, oh and by the way i'm supposed to tell you Stuart, that uh, jeffrey wants you to sign this for him <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's great. That's so funny. But anyway, uh, yeah. All right. Well, what else, Gene? Okay, Stuart. Uh, why don't you uh, drop back to you did the last show at the Magic Castle before they locked it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? Because it changed your life. Because all of a sudden, it was Zombie Land. Tell about that trip home, and then what? Because that led to this show. Uh, yeah. Um, so I was uh, performing my show and the uh, man stage manager said, this is the last show. And after and it was on, a, the, it was a Sunday show. The matinee. And uh, after the matinee, I was supposed to do a lecture. 
So not only was I the last person to perform on the palace, but I was also the last person to literally do anything at the castle because the manager came in and he said, everybody out in the middle of my lecture, but I got stuff to sell. Wow. <laughs> Done. So, so we go back to uh, the Nirvana and we're just hoping that we can get a flight out. And so we get a flight out. Now all of you have the same story. We were, we were all working, we were all doing something. But on the flight back, I had, uh, I was gonna be going to Spain, I was gonna have two, two other cruise ships coming up and I was touring all of the nightclub magic places that were around, that were popping up. And by the time I landed, all of them had left messages and said, nope, done, uh, we're, not, we're, we're closed. So I had nothing afterwards. It reminded me of 9-11, you know, my, all my work was just gone. So uh, I langu languished for the entire month of March. And, uh, and then in the middle of April, I got a call from the Croswell Opera House. And since it's a local place, we, we sell out every time that we're there and they wanted us to do a show. And they were just gonna film it and then stream the filmed show. And I thought, mm, that's, that's just like watching TV. So I said, what, why don't we do a Zoom show? And then I learned about Helder's show the, at the Geffen. And uh, that's the present, which is supposed to be amazing. And I thought, well, why don't we do a Zoom show? And I've never done a Zoom show. So I bought every book that Steinmeier wrote about puzzles and things that work automatically. And bought probably $1,000 worth of books and, and props and just magic tricks that I could find and DVDs and... I mean that that uh, thing with the goblet. That's Charlie Fry's routine with a little with a, a twist on the end. That's mine. Um, so I, I put together a show as hastily as I possibly could, and I knew that we needed more time. But uh, if we kept waiting, our money would be gone, and <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> so uh, so I learned how to zoom, and I and I said if I'm going to zoom a show, I'm not going to be sitting down. I I remember. With Gene, you know, I, I want to have a, a story uh, of some sort. It's a loose story, of course. Um, but I wanted it to have a feeling of uh, energy, animation, not just sitting at a desk. Uh, I wanted it to be dynamic where I was walking back to the shelf and pulling things off and, and, and having a general expectation of what a 1960s kind of a show would be. And... <laughs> Um, I've been getting all kinds of advice uh, from people, and, I, and, and the end of the show I got from Billy Crystal. And, uh, and not that he and I are friends or anything, but I listened to one of his um, lectures that he was doing about comedy, and he said, always have a leave behind. That's what he was taught. And so the leave behind is, is that if, if I can live through all of this stuff, oh, then okay. you can live, you know, whatever you're getting through, you can do too. And, and, and that's a very typical um, gesture that people would do back in, in, in that day. So that's how that whole thing came about. And then we would do all kinds of shows. Matter of fact, Tobin was at one of the first shows that we Zoomed and there was only three of us. And in the middle of the Zoom show, the alarms were going off on his cell phone that there were riots happening us nearby. <laughs> they were telling him to lock down or something. It was uh, pretty, Pretty crazy. Ooh. I'm a long I way. I really like that line, that hope is contagious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was great. Really good. And the little leap behind thing. I thought that was really yeah. good. Okay. Well, yeah. One thing I really liked about the show was just the set and the artifacts. And, you know, like afterwards when you were like dialing on the old phone, you know, was, the dusting off the record. You walked over and just picked up your Man of the Century Award. All these like little gestures in between, I thought really added charm. It reminded me a little bit of um, Paul Draper does a show and it's, it's a great show and wonderful magic and all of that. Um, but he, he's, he's got all of these old anthropologic like collections. He's got this, this flute you know, Navajo flute that he plays for a second. He just like picks up these like interesting objects and it somehow adds dimension to the story. 
And I, I, I did think the story and the, the envelope of why you're, you know, the little backstory to it and filling that out really pulled together the magic uh, in a way that a lot of virtual shows in particular don't have. And we get so locked into this frame, so many magicians just set up their camera and then perform straight ahead. And just those few moments when you walked around and you pick something up and you, you know, the transitions of the desk in and out, there were lots of little kind of clever scene moments that I thought really enhanced the overall appreciation. So I, I really, I just wanted to express that. Oh, so thanks. thanks. We worked a lot, a, a lot on that. And, and yeah. believe it or not, uh, in the very beginning, I was doing all of that myself. I was doing the camera switching, <laughs> was doing the, the audio, and I said, uh, this is ridiculous. And then that's when I handed all that. So all of that is on Lori. She's doing all the behind the scenes. Great job, Lori. <laughs> well, and, yep. well, and I, I will say this. I, thank you, guys. But when, when he came up, because we have, we have two houses right now. And so sometimes when we were doing it, I was in Adrian and he was in Kalamazoo. So that's why I wasn't doing that. And then I'd be here and, and I would come in this room and watch the show. And, and, and when he said, you know, maybe you could do the cameras or the, the thing. And I went out and the first night I learned to do it. I don't know how he was doing it. There's, he was doing the magic and the character and the stuff. And it is, I am on that, computer screen with the music and the, it's all cameras and music and tags and bumps and, and I'm like, I don't know how I did it. And so, well, I don't know how I did it. I, I didn't do it well. That's. He didn't do well, it. Well, and <laughs> I just want to comment how your character has grown. I saw it, I think the second night after previews. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to see it in previews. I want to see a first real show. And then this is next to closing, which is the most important show, next to closing in a show of any sort. So that's what I wanted to see. And how your character has grown and the confidence you have on stage. And this is just me and a swagger. You know, it's just, it is it's great. Now you are really great at it now. Well, the, 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 the one part that helped crystallize the character, believe it or not, was just, it's just one prop. And it sets off the mood for me and puts me in a, in a comfortable spot. And it's that hot water. <laughs> That I put my hands in. <laughs> it, as soon as I do that, I'm like, okay, I feel like all the steam that's in my body. It's like, it's like literally, I feel like it's wafting out, and I can relax because it's such an absurd. It's so it's so absurd. You haven't ever peed your pants from doing that. <laughs> if you were sleeping, that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Still young. Uh, I'll, I'll add that joke. Like, so far, so good. <laughs> I really liked the, you, you, you know, I love the magic. But one of the things that uh, someone made uh, reference to was your personality really came through. First of all, I want to thank you because I don't think I've laughed that hard since all of this chaos has, has happened. But I love the fact that your personality was fully there. You know, the the gestures, the energy, all of the things that we know to be everything that we love about you, it really came through. And it wasn't just listening to someone or watching someone. Right. Um, it was really joyful and, and that came across. I also like the way that you, uh, as Mac mentioned at the end, talked about hope spreading like a virus. You made reference to whatever we're going through, we can get through it. And, and you didn't have to mention the pandemic or COVID or, you know, it, it was just beautifully stated because some of us are going through things unrelated to that. Um, and, and you left it to your audience and that made it very personal. It's like when we close with the roses, you know, it's very personal to, to your audience member. And that was very touching. and It came across. I just, I thought you finessed that so beautifully. So thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, little parts there that are, are um timely you know like the the I'm test the what? what test i can hear him but barely yeah oh, the the test. Test. yeah no the the test you know the uh oh the test oh the the kind oh. of ability to <laughs> <the test. laughs> oh, yeah 
And it's important to vote. I really <laughs> That was great. That was good. Oh, there are some great. subtle references there. They're not subtle. They're not subtle. They're, 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 they're post office. You know, I, I, do, I do just want to say, though, that I, I'm, I'm glad you said that, Sue, because one of the things when we went into this, our main goal, and Stu and I talked about this a lot, was I don't want this to be heavy. I don't want this to be politically driven. I don't want this to be you know, a big thinker or make people melancholy. I said, what we need is fluffy, fun, and silly, and but still good magic. We never wanted to compromise the magic. It's great and, magic. Yeah. And that's, well, that's what we have Facebook for. <laughs> <Apparently>. <laughs> but, but that I'm glad you said that because I mean that makes me feel good because that's really what we were trying to hammer in is just yeah. for an hour forget about what's going yeah. on let's have some fun and, and laugh so I'm glad well, that I, I got a, um, an email from America's Got Talent they got word of this and and uh, <laughs> So America's got to, so they, so they go, oh yeah, I really like this character. He's got a lot of, a lot of good stuff going for him. And uh, they wanted to, they liked the, <clears throat> the one where I, I did the garage sale oh, and the price, the price tag thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they said, oh, we want to see, we, they made one suggestion. It was only one cocktail shaker that we were using, but then I, we went out and literally went to a garage sales and thrift stores and we got extra ones <laughs> because that was one suggestion and, and it actually made it a little bit of a, a, a show of your piece. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> then I get another email from them and they wanted to change the direct, direction of the act completely. They said, you know, uh, on second thought, we really want this character to be suave and debonair, kind of like uh, Don, uh, Draper. Don Draper. Can it, can it be more Don Draper? We're like, <laughs> No, and I mean, can't. you mean like everybody on America's Got Talent? <laughs> <laughs> Super serious and like, uh, I'm like, no. I'm like, that is not. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, and uh, there, there's some interesting things that are happening. Uh, I got, um, I'm to the second phase of uh, um, a, a Broadway On Demand also got a hold of this. And so they asked me mm. to pitch and then they liked the pitch that I had. And so they asked me to pitch again. But as you know, in this business, you can pitch all day long and, and if you don't hit it out of the park, but um, that would be interesting. I did yeah. see the contract, but, uh, and I don't know if I would sign it. Oh my God. <laughs> Throw it to an attorney. Yeah, we own yeah. everything. Forever. Ooh, ooh, uh -uh. So, but. Yeah, it, this has been a, a, a journey for us, and it's been it's been fun. Um, it's it it's been uh, it's it's really weird when you're when you're putting together a show when you and you have a FISM background where you you have to be, uh, pay attention to every single tiny incy lincy little detail, and then this one there's so many details that are packed all throughout this, and we, and you you uncover them as you go through the act. But the hard, hard part is, is that we've learned for the past 40 years how to react from an audience and we don't have that. And so that, that back and forth is really uh, strange. I almost feel like I'm a weatherman, you know, standing there, you know, okay, here's the weather. Here's a trick, by the way, and nobody's, you know, doing anything. Like yesterday, the yesterday show was so horrible. And I'm glad that you all got to come to this one because <laughs> it was we had somebody from a, a group from a nursing home. Oh, no. Retirement community. A but... Retirement community. And a they, home for the ancient. Yeah, so. Well, but they were all in the big giant room with the big giant. Yeah, there's a lot of them in there. But... And they had the sound up so loud that oh, other oh. computers were hearing the thing and so i would speak and i'd say pick a card five seconds later pick a card pick a card it was <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I would i would mute them and they would unmute and i was, <laughs> and I, I was telling everybody just go home everybody please just go home do something different it was just a horrible show uh, but it wasn't that bad but yeah, it was annoying yeah it was really annoying but it's amazing the things that we're seeing uh 
people uh tell about that one <laughs> i had i had a lady and said would you like to see the greatest card trick in the world and I'm like here pick a card and she goes just a second i gotta go feed my dog <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then you see her wandering around then she's okay. having an argument with her husband where's chancy <laughs> he has to be fed. Uh, like, it's a little Franz. like having Franz in the audience. <laughs> Franz. <laughs> that was really funny. It was hilarious. He, came he did the same thing a couple of weeks ago for the Abbott's call, but he was in his convertible. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, he, he, he's popped in about two or three different shows, but it's always, and, and I, I know the time difference, and I know some of you guys have it too right now, but, but yeah, he's always wandering around or doing something. He pop in, pop out. But the first time he had his hair like in a ponytail, he had the mask, and Stuart said after, he's like, who was that homeless guy? <laughs> <laughs> it was Ross. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it makes me think about how how frustrated we are as performers because people under, you know, pre-COVID circumstances, they were terrible audiences. You know, they're on their phones and they're posting and they're talking and it, people have forgotten how to be a proper, polite, respectful audience when you're live mm -hmm. and in person, right? Yeah. You know, we've just seen that kind of fray. So I love, Lori, that in the beginning, you know, I, I was like, she needs to say that again. You know, you are a live audience. So remember, you, you know, you're not at home letting the dog out and arguing with your husband and go and get your Cracker Jack or Rice -a roni It's, you know, we can hear you, we can see you. And um, it, yeah, remember, you're, you're an audience. And I think as this all evolves, those of us who are at, on the audience part of it, we're also learning to go, oh, sh you know, right, you know, like, oh, yeah. You can hear that, you know, even if we're whispering or, or the dog needs to go out. So we're learning to be audiences through Zoom as well, um, on top of the fact that, you know, p people were like that in live performances. You know that better oh, yeah. than I do. Yeah. Well, I yeah. would add to that as well that I, I thought initially it was going to be a little disjointed because you know, a legit live performance where you're sharing the same space with the performer. Right. We don't have that now, we're on a screen. But I actually think something was really gained because like here we all are sitting in our parlors as it were. And you know, you're not against some ethereal black background of with a proscenium, you're in a legitimate room. And so it's like the share is actually conversely, I think it's actually more more intimate, really. Even yes. the spatial yeah, stuff that. feels like I was really gratified that it was like you were doing it directly to me, you know, a lot of other people on the call, you know? Yeah. It, yeah. Well, that, well, that's, that, that's that is a, a, a good gla ha glass half full uh, attitude. Yeah. Um, and and I will. I want to credit Tobin for the uh, the gag at the end with the boxer shorts. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was Tobin. He, early early on, he way said, early, yeah. "You have to figure out a way for you know uh, to to." Uh, he, he, initially, it was supposed to be. A, correct me if I'm wrong, Tobin. Is that I was supposed to walk away from the table during the show, and I would be have the boxer shorts on. And throughout the entire show, or something like that. It's well, with yeah. the idea that, like you know, we've seen it all on Facebook and whatnot. Yeah. But you know, everybody's yeah. in their meetings, and from the like upper portion of your body is put together. But anything yeah. you don't see, you yeah. know, is, yeah. is a bus rack, as it were. It's or, because yeah. it's because yeah. Tobin told us he puts pretty things on stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would I would bet a dollar somebody's not wearing pants right now. <laughs> you weren't gonna say I, anything. It was Chris, I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> so 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 Paul Gertner, I, I, I've never met you before, but I've seen you uh on Johnny Carson many times and uh on Fool Us. I was wondering how was your experience with Fool Us? Were you on it three times? I was on four times now. Four times. Wow. Uh, wow. And that was the last show I did. You know, when you're talking about the last Castle show, yeah. my last show was uh, March 6th at the uh, Penn and Teller. Wow. And now uh, I'm flying home just like you. Started to get the emails. Everything's canceling and so on. I'm curious, was with the Sunday you said you did the lecture at the Magic Castle? 
it was either March 8th or it was either March 15th. It was the 15th. The 15th. So the whole week, you worked that whole week. Yeah. yeah. Things yeah, were just... We, well, it was, it was funny. I, this will be my castle story because we got there and when we got there on that, what, Sunday, Monday, I guess, it was that things are not quite right, but nothing was shut down yet. So we're like, okay. So we went Monday and it wasn't too bad. Tuesday, we went and walked down um, Hollywood Boulevard and we went up in that, where that little mall thing is where you can kind of look out over the, the gallery of the stars. And we're like, there's nobody here. Like you could see all the stars. There were no people. We're like, this is weird. By Wednesday, we didn't go out anymore. And by Wednesday at the club, every night we're like, why are we still here? The performers were all like, we should probably not be here anymore. Then we did Thursday, then we did Friday. And by Saturday, everybody was like, oh, we don't know what's going on. And then Sunday during the matinee, right during the matinee, they said everybody, well, actually we were on with Eric Buss. Mm -hmm. And Eric Buss was, did not do the matinee and that day. And he walked in and he's like, they told me to come and pack up. And it was during the show. So we're like, oh. So yeah, and it was that 15th. And then just like you said, Paul, when, you know, it was the weirdest ride from when we left to when we landed, everything changed. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. we, were in, uh, we, were in, we were in Las Vegas. And the last day we shot the Penn and Teller thing and it went real well and everything. And I was there with my son and daughter and my wife. And my mm -hmm. daughter had flown in from Boston and Denver because my wife doesn't like sitting in the audience by herself when I do that show. She hates it. And uh, so they were there to give her a little moral support. But what Billy wanted to do was he wanted to go to, I forget which one, whatever the top buffet thing with the seafood and crab. Oh, yeah in Vegas, so we went to whichever one it was, I don't know, and, and, and which hotel, I don't even remember, Caesars or whatever. And we're sitting there with these lobsters and crabs and so on, and the news is starting to come in on the, the virus going around. And my son turns to me and says, you know, Dad, we're here, we're here at a buffet. Every handle we touched, yeah. and touched someone else in this buffet and it was packed it was packed he said look around you he said this is the most insane thing you know for us to be doing as the virus is hitting but when we were walking down the boulevard of las vegas it was packed everything was packed still mm -hmm. and billy said to me he says you know it sort of feels like one of those uh horror films where the meteor is coming toward the earth <laughs> <laughs> have absolutely no clue that within the next month we'll be fucking nuts <laughs> and so on. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It was, I mean we were we were still we were pretty busy. It was you know heading up to to spring break, which is one of the busiest weeks for me. And um it was you know I I Penn and I were texting on Friday and Saturday both during the day about hey are you gonna do a show today? Are you gonna do a show today? And uh, we both kind of you know decided that Saturday was going to be the last one, I think. And then mm -hmm. that the 14th, I think. 14th. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, well, uh, it was that Friday. Friday is when they closed Disneyland when we were out there. And that's why we're like, we won't be doing shows tomorrow. And we did one more day and then it was over. Mm -hmm. So yeah, crazy, crazy. And we got a call uh, a week and a half later um, from somebody who was at the castle that had COVID. Oh, hey, oh boy. Are you guys healthy? Oh boy. Mm. That was scary. Yeah, I remember when you called and you said, I don't know if I'm going to be able, be able to make it out from Hollywood. I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. Well, enjoy, enjoy where you're staying. <laughs> Nirvana. Well, it was the first time that we ever saw downtown Los Angeles. We could, we were uh, up by the Lowe's Theater and, and we, you know, where the mall is up there. And we looked over uh where we could never see the the downtown and we're like oh los angeles is right there we never noticed it oh. yeah. the back to there. the back to the show Stu. sure what have you learned uh, to to work virtual like this you know over this period of time of uh, facing a virtual audience out there that doesn't respond what have you learned out of this? I've learned how to be uh, a better performer um, I, because uh, you have to learn how to love the camera lens and, mm. and <laughs> you know and 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 know what that space looks like and 
Uh, I got so many comments from people saying that when your face gets really close, it's really fun. And, and so you, I would do that a lot. I would play with yeah. that. Um, so we learned about camera angles. We learned about uh, the, how well the GoPro looks when you do that one trick because you can see more. Um, but it's about, it's about the timing. And, and uh, I had one person who gave a really descriptive um, review of the show. And he said, uh, at one point, you mentioned that, well, I guess I'll just move on then because I didn't hear any applause or anything. I didn't hear any reaction. And he, he said, you kind of pulled the rug out from underneath us because all of us were really enjoying the show. And he, and he said, uh, maybe oh. Richard was kind of just goofing around, but it kind of, it's like, we were really enjoying the show. And I had no idea that they were enjoying it because it would be like, ta-da, boom. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. that happens with live shows too though i mean i've yeah. seen guys where they're not you know they're not getting the reaction that they want and so they say something and then then it's over almost it's like yeah they scold the audience yeah it's the same in live shows too or you can you know hey i was having a great time until that asshole said that we were a terrible <laughs> audience <Yeah>. great <laughs> Well put. <laughs> Very succinct. Well, I, I, I was, my character was gentle with the audience. I wasn't saying they were terrible, but, uh, but it, it was, it's interesting the, the feeling that you have to fight, that, that, that they are having a good time. Mm -hmm. You have to wrestle with that. And I think before our, our premiere, we had done 40 shows that were all with private with friends. And, um, and then when our first show happened, it was uh, it was it was rough to try to figure out the timing of the jokes because I could say something in my living room, but three or four seconds later, then you would hear people, you know, oh my gosh, that was amazing, and so that timing is not as immediate, so you have to wait. But that's also part of good theater too, is that um, the pause is so important that uh, I'm learning the pause all over again. It's like. Mm -hmm. And then you can applaud and, or, or laugh or, or do whatever. Uh, so I've learned a lot, a lot about that, but this is a totally different animal. Um, I will, I'll be totally honest with you. Right before the show starts, I am so depressed. I mean, I could just walk away. I, I'm unhappy right before the show. I listened to, I listened to Weird Al Yankovic I try to get myself pumped up and, and get in a funny mood. But right before I walk out, I'm just depressed because I'm just going out in my living room and I see my living room every day and, uh, and I'm performing to a camera and just this monitor with people on it. And, and so uh, that's where... I had that, that bucket of water thing to just sort of get me out of that. Because when I walk out on stage, I'm like, I'm so cold. I'm actually like, I'm so unhappy. I'm so <laughs> unhappy. <laughs> I'm so, <laughs> I'm so cold though. And, and, uh, and, 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 that's, and that's what I've learned is, is, is a, a way to kick, kick those feelings out and, and get in at it. Um, and the other thing I learned too is, is you can't do a show on Zoom for two people, which I have done. <laughs> and the, the Croswell, uh, bless their hearts, are a good organization, but they said, okay, you've got two people tonight. Have a great show. <laughs> they didn't give us a heads up on it. Like they told us two hours beforehand. And they're like, here's the two people tonight. Have a good one. We're like, oh, so, no. So the elephant joke, if it doesn't go very well, uh, like with Tracy tonight, uh, he was some, <laughs> he was so far off. Um, it's so funny if you, you learn really quickly. doesn't you, even start with an R. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, who, right. Like, so, the, okay, okay, the second letter in the... <laughs> yeah. you, you so, find out very quickly who cannot do math but, 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 I, but I told them I told the Croswell I said if 
if 50% of the audience of two don't get it, it's, uh, <laughs> it's going to bomb. Sure. This is like the old days when we all did boiler room shows and either a thousand people showed up or two right. showed up. Yeah. 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 Or, or, nobody or, or nobody showed. Or nobody showed. Or nobody showed, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that happened. Was, you know what helped you, I think, in the transition in between show, I mean, in between the trick, was a little tune that you had. The little bumper music. music. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Kind of got you into that rhythm of coming back. It helped yeah. you. It was, yeah. yeah. Chip, uh, Chip put it, uh, help, help, uh, he saw our show and... No, Chip Lowell. Uh, Chip yeah. Lowell. And, and he said, yeah, you need a little, a little bumper or something to mm -hmm. kind of fill in those gaps. And, right. and then and then we landed on this one piece and <laughs> I thought it almost sounds like I'm gonna go talk to Mr. Mr. Rogers is gonna talk to the conductor. Let's go over here. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that's what Stu is thinking every time he goes and does that. Yeah. Yeah. So I so in other words, I'm trying to go to every happy place in the corner of my brain. <laughs> You know, the Three Stooges with the pot of water, Mr. Rogers, uh, e everything that is in a happy spot here, I have to. Uh, <clears throat> so there you go. Oh. That's how that came about. How do you feel now that it's coming to an end, the, this well, next? Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, it was not financially successful by a long shot. Um, we thought that it was going to do way better. And then we found out uh, timing is everything. Um, everybody is zoomed out. Uh, mm -hmm. If you go on Eventbrite, there's probably four or 500 magicians that are racing to the bottom for doing either a show for $5, $10, $15, yeah. $20, whatever, whatever it'll be. And, and so you're competing against that. Yeah. And yeah. then, and then I, uh, when the, the Croswell stopped selling tickets at midnight the day before. So then I would go on SME Talk Magic and I would just say, here's a link, everybody, come and see the show. And literally only four people <laughs> would come. Sure. You know, at a group of 5,000 magicians, four would show up or two would show up. And, and uh, so it's like you can't give it away, you can't sell it. So mm, mm. Where, where does it go from there? So that's yeah. the, that's the. Well, I think part of though, uh, Stuart is is it's the summer too. I mean, I think yeah. if it had, if you had, if this had happened, if you'd had this ready to go, uh, April first. Yeah. Oh yeah. Made a big difference, yeah. and you know yeah. now people are like, I'm going to go out in my backyard, or I'm going to go hiking, or I'm going to, you know, it's like I'm not, you know, I'm not sticking around at night if I don't have to. And yeah. So it, it's hard. Have, yeah. Yeah, well, and, and it's funny, too, because, you know, again, we kind of rushed to get anything together, and there were so many learning hurdles to go through for this, oh that by the time we finally got it up, and then the Croswell even did say at one of our last meetings, they said, you know, August is always the worst time for us to do any shows. <laughs> we're like, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> no, no, but I think, I think it, it, if you, it, there's a maybe revisiting in an October or something, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we've been talking about that and i think yeah. it will i think it'll come back yeah. in the fall as uh he's back and and maybe we'll have like yeah i i told Stu we put a pumpkin in the back and it's halloween capers and then <laughs> and christmas tree back and it's like I christmas guess, right. cocktail capers i think richard's gonna be around for a while in some different forms but yeah it's yeah you don't, have to, um, you don't have to return that wig <laughs> no. Oh, did, he, did Stu tell you the, the story of the wig? Okay, because this is... On the wig? Oh, yeah, go. What was that, Oscar? Is that 2.0 on the wig? No. No, it's the, it's the only one. It's still one? It's still one. Yeah. The, okay, so this is the backstory on that. We did that haunted house forever, and we have a whole bunch of, you know, wigs and things, but they're all props. Well, my great uncle was a barber up in Detroit, and his big thing that he would tell me all the time is like, I cut Iggy Pop's dad's hair. That was <laughs> that's like his big thing. So I know. So my whole life, I know he cuts Iggy Pop's dad's 
hair <laughs> at his barber shop. Well, he also designed toupees. And when he passed away, probably about, I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago, he had this whole box of stuff that my mom was a beautician and he was a barber. And he gave it all to my mom. They're like, do you want this? So she gave it to us for the haunting. And it's all these like personal toupees. And there's little ones, there's comb-overs, there's all, and it's a whole box of them. We went through it and we found Richard Preston's hair in there. And I will tell you what, under the best lighting, it matches Stu's exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, you were meant to wear this toupee that was fashioned in like 1962. So it looks great. It looks so great. Much. If, if only we'd known, we could have gotten you Marshall Brown's <laughs> toupee. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, see? My dog is being very miserable. I'm going to lock her in the other room. Okay. <laughs> you do not get to stay here any longer. You must leave. Well, I, I, I feel pretty good about tonight. I think everybody had a, a good time. I, I, we, I'm starting to run out of gas, Gene. <laughs> no, no, you, you worked hard. You did what you were supposed uh, yeah. to do. It was a great show, great show. My wife peeked her head in uh, for dinner, so I've got to scoot too. Yeah, Gene, thanks for ringleading this. Yeah, yeah it was fun. fun. It was a good show. Great well, show, thank, yeah, Thanks for turning yep. us on to it. And uh, I did. Uh, hey, uh, Stuart, did uh, did Gene tell you that my buddy uh, Nick Defat, comedy magician here in town, said that he'd seen a he's seen like twelve or fifteen Zoom shows, and he really enjoyed yours the most. So, oh, wow. Wow. Oh, so he was on the he was he didn't, tell, he didn't tell me to tell you that, so he doesn't know I said that. So, okay. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. I appreciate That's awesome. That. Thanks. Well, it's good seeing Thank everybody. You guys. It's great to see all yeah. you. I know. Yeah. It's so fun, you guys. So. Good night, everyone. Congratulations to the great. I love you guys. Lovely guys. to see you guys. Thank you, Gene. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Gene. Thanks, Gene. Thanks, Gene. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye, Bye. 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 B